What I want to do is go through every single feature that's new in uh, Studio One uh, 6. I'm going to give you my honest opinion, no matter if it's a positive or a negative. Before starting the video, I just want to say one thing. Studio One is my favorite DAW ever. I've been using Studio One since version 1. So a really long time. I've paid for the upgrade, had no hesitation in doing so. I like Presonus as a company, but in uh, this video, you're gonna see some ranting. A couple of things that I really dislike about the situation uh, surrounding uh, Studio One. This is what's new. First thing is smart templates. Oh, they are not that smart smart template so we are talking about this section right here it's quite basic and i think it's aimed more towards the beginners that's not a bad thing but these are just templates that you can make on your own i was excited about one feature and that's um this drop files here. I said to myself, oh, that's quite nice. But guess what? This feature is not in the custom templates. I don't know why it just missed the, the mark for me. It was a great opportunity to implement that into a user template. With the smart templates, you also cannot uh, edit them really strange i wish that i can uh, alter those uh, smart templates the smart templates not that smart in my opinion next up we have the customization editor this is quite a cool feature you can access it by going to view and customization and you can see that we have already a couple of uh, presets let's uh, call them and this basically changes uh, what studio one uh, shows what you see on uh, screen i've already created uh, a mixing template where i hide almost everything the not so great part about this one is that not every single part of the interface can be shown or hidden i don't know why you give the user this type of um, option when it's not 100%. For example, in the toolbar, I cannot hide the quantize. When mixing, I don't need that. I cannot hide it. This is the minimal toolbar that I have. Same goes for transport. I believe this is the, the minimal you can go. It would be cool if you can have just what you exactly need. I really don't know why they didn't give us fully access to customize the, the interface, but it's a really cool feature that I appreciate. I never used the loops tab in the, the browser. Now I can hide that. It's a great feature that helps keeping Studio One not so uh, bloated. It simplifies it and I appreciate that. Lyrics integration. This is something that I will not use, it's not for me, I don't care that much about it. It's probably amazing when it comes to songwriting. A video track, this is something that I am excited about, you can access it just like this. I've added a video track, right now this uh, track is on the timeline, you can add the audio from it, you can do basic edits to the video. I believe this is a really great addition, especially for people that are writing uh, scores, especially for people that are creating uh, content. For example, I can import my final YouTube video and do the audio processing there, audio editing, add the background music, add special effects and things like that. It's a really, really nice addition. It works with the same tools as the audio. So great, great feature that's been uh, added. Next up, we have track presets. This is another feature that missed the mark for me. And let me show you what I'm talking about. With the uh, track presets, you just drag and drop them and they give you a couple of options to, for example, this is to record on a uh, two track or to import your audio files. My plan for this feature was to 
simplify my workflow. When I start mixing, I import a bunch of audio tracks and then I route them, I color them, I uh, add sends. I thought to myself, oh, this uh, can be a really cool feature. Let's make a track preset. Um, these are the lead vocals. I usually color them, let's say, red. I add a bunch of sends. Let's go with uh, reverb and uh, delay. I want to save this as a track preset. We have that option right here, store track presets. Uh, let's call it test. No description, nothing. So now let's say that this is a newly imported uh, file. Let's apply the track preset, test, okay. You can see that it doesn't follow the, the color. It doesn't follow the input and output. It's strange. I don't know why. It could have been a really great feature for this purpose. Simplifying the starting of a project, a big project with multiple uh, background vocals, I can just select them, apply a track preset, that track preset selects the color, selects the sense, selects the input, output and everything. I guess that this was intended for a different uh, purpose. Advanced collaboration with uh, Prestonosphere. I'm not interested in um, subscription uh, stuff, so I'm not going to, to talk about it. DSR, okay, it's uh, a DSR. Vocoder, this got a lot of airtime on the release. Okay, it's a cool uh, little plugin. In uh, 10 years, I've been uh, mixing, uh, I believe I've used the vocoder maybe twice. So it's not something usual. Pro EQ3, this one is great because now we have dynamic mode in uh, Pro EQ3. Cool little feature for someone who mixes uh, daily. I already had dynamic EQs, but this is a great addition to someone that gets into mixing, mastering, gets a lot of views uh, in my daily workflow. Fader flips. Um, this uh, is a cool feature flip the faders and now you can uh, see the sand on the big fader. For me it's not that uh, big of a function but it's uh, a really cool uh, addition. Panning modes, again this one isn't uh, a wow thing. We have now three different uh, panning modes. We have the original one where we change the panning from left to right. Now we have dual that looks like this and can narrow a track or pan just the right or just the left channel. Pretty, pretty cool. We also have binaural and this is basically this plugin where we can uh, pan left, right and we also have the, the width. It also opens up as a pop-up. Pretty cool if you ask me. Not something that's, uh, wow. Mixer channel overview. This is not for me. I don't use the mixer channel overview. This looks uh, really similar to what Cubase has for years with the inserts, with the channel view. A nice addition, not incredible. Browser and folders. I don't know why they mention this as new in uh, Studio One 6. This is not a great uh, upgrade or update. Updated start page is uh, again a strange one for me. Um, a redesigned uh, start page with a couple of uh, uh, new additions like adding uh, folders. I don't use that. Like uh, pinning projects with this uh, pinned toggle list. Another thing that they've mentioned is the ability to add a new artist. This is cool, but the implementation of it is strange in my opinion. Every time I start a new project, I have to change the artist from this list. I wish that they implemented this function in the template or when you start a new project. In the settings area, you can have a drop down menu to select the artist that you are working on. Other notable addition, sends on uh, FX channels. This was 
strange in the beginning, but uh, now it seems that they fixed it. When mixing, I like sending, for example, a delay to a reverb. Now you can do that with FX tracks. Previously, I was using uh, bus uh, tracks, but now they are the same. They are, I don't know, it's uh, strange. Another cool addition is that now the sand pans are linked to the main uh, pan. Previously, we had this, and now if you lock pan to channel, the sand pan is following the main channel pan, which is uh, pretty cool. Micro view for third party plugins. This is exciting because you can open up any third party plugin and you can set up the micro parameters. For example, I can add the feedback, I can add the um, style, and you can edit that from this uh, micro view. Great little addition. Track and uh, channel uh, icons. Yeah, you can add all sorts of different uh, icons to your mixes. It's not a big, big thing in terms of workflow, in terms of usability of uh, Studio One. Let's go through the features. Um, let's see if there's something really, really big. Uh, auto filter, I was laughing about this one. Uh, they mentioned that they've improved the auto filter. Okay, this is a great creative effect, but it's just a uh, refresh. I'm trying to find new features that are great. Yes, sir, I've mentioned it. Easy sidechain routing, yeah, it's uh, a bit different now. If I add like a Pro EQ, when I open up the sidechains, you can see that it's uh, a bit different, the, the menu, which is uh, pretty cool. Yeah, not that uh, many notable changes. Now I want to talk about something that's been on my mind for uh, some time. Personus has a strange way to approach things. For example, if you go to their website, hit try now. There is no demo, so you cannot try Studio One right now. You can use it, you can pay for it, like I did just to uh, showcase it. From a content creator uh, perspective, this is uh, nasty. No demo available. It's only available if you are uh, subscribed to the Personus uh, Sphere. That sucks. I don't really understand how you release something without having the, the proper demo. This is not a release. This is a pre-release or an early access uh, stuff for the um, subscribers of the Personosphere. That's uh, something that I really, really dislike. Another thing is that no release notes. This is everything that they shared. Um, nothing about the performance, nothing about what's been fixed or improved from version 5, nothing. So no demo, no release notes. It really feels strange for me. Another thing that bothers me is how they um, release things. I, I understand this is something really subjective, it's personal, it's uh, not my business, it's theirs and they can do whatever they want. But one thing that I feel it's uh, missing from uh, Studio One is uh, proper content. They have content creators making uh, pretty good content, but it's based on Studio One features. It's not real life examples. Those are employees that are making the content. Personus 
is not sharing the the software early with uh, talented uh, content creators that can create some really really amazing content around studio one i highly respect everyone that's creating uh content uh, on youtube but i don't know it feels old it's not current it's not creating hype it's not creating excitement around studio one because they keep everything a big secret no big creator on YouTube is creating content with it. It's really strange. And I am not talking about myself. I am a big fan of Studio One. It feels disappointing to not have fellow content creators uh, sharing really nice uh, content based uh, around Studio One. All we have is, and I mean no disrespect, some content created around the features without showcasing the features just mentioning the features nothing uh, that's uh, exciting and that's the sad truth go over to youtube and that's the only thing that you will find do i believe this is uh, a worthy upgrade no i don't think so this feels unpolished rushed maybe even though it's been two years since uh, we had uh, version 5. This is just a small upgrade with a couple of great features, I have to admit it. But the price they're asking, that's not worth it. I got it because, like I've said, I love Studio One. It's my main door. I don't think I will change it anytime soon. But it feels weird and it feels uh, like a really small, small upgrade. I had bigger expectations and uh, I don't know, I'm kind of uh, disappointed. Maybe version 6 runs uh, smoother, maybe it has improved uh, things in the background. I will uh, have a proper video in the future about uh, Studio One 6. This is going to be a really long video, a rant rather than a proper video, but I had uh, a couple of things that uh, I had to, to say about this one.